Hey guys! Today I'm going to be doing a tag or challenge that has been going around booktube recently. Actually, I'm not sure if actually it's a recent challenge or if it's a challenge that was made a long time ago and people are just not doing it. I don't know. I haven't really looked that far into it. I saw Jesse the Reader do it a few weeks ago and I've been wanting to do it ever since. So this is me doing it. And that is the Do I Have That Book Challenge. Now for some of these questions, I did actually go through and pre-find some of these books just because I have over a thousand books and some of these questions I wasn't sure if I actually had a book that fit this category or not and I didn't want to spend 20 or 30 minutes going through all of my books just to see if I have it. A perfect example of this is the first question which is do you have a book with deckled edges which I don't care for deckled edges just because I mean aesthetically they're pleasing but I just I personally don't like deckled edges because if every time I go to like turn the page it feels like it's like an uphill battle to get the right page to turn which is why I only have two books in the hundreds of books I own that have deckled edges. The first one is The Complete Sherlock Holmes Volume 1. It triggers me that it says The Complete Sherlock Holmes and then Volume 1 right underneath of it. Obviously, it's not complete. And then I have Restore Me by Tahara Mafi. This book, I just wanted the complete collection of Sherlock Holmes, even though it was Volume 1. I still wanted it just because I want to read some of Sherlock Holmes stories. Will I get to the same time soon? Probably not but it'll be there when I'm ready to read it. As for Restore Me, I didn't know it had deckled edges. I bought this online and the next question is, do I have a book with three people on the cover? Obviously, the, any Rick Riordan book I think almost has like, it has three, I think? Yeah, okay, it's it's almost all, because I'm looking for House of Hades right now and it only has two people on the cover. So almost all of Rick Riordan's books I feel like would have three people on the cover. But I'm going to, unless I can't find another book with three people, I'm not going to choose any Rick Riordan's books because I feel like that's cheating. Would a manga be cheating? Because I know manga has all those, uh, like has a slew of characters on them. Found one! This is a middle grade novel that I, I really liked this trilogy. I can't remember. It's the Blackwell Pages trilogy. Um, and this is the third book in the series, Thor's Serpent by K.L. Armstrong and M.A. Marr actually a really really good series and as you can see there are three people on the cover. If you guys are looking for a good Norse mythology middle grade series and you've already read Rick Riordan's, I highly recommend this series. Question number three is do you have a story based on another fictional story? So basically any retelling. I believe I've gone over this in several videos about the number of retellings I actually own so this one's gonna be pretty easy. I mean, I have the entire Lunar Chronicles right there, and then let's see. I don't want to. I don't want to do the Lunar Chronicles though, because I feel like everyone does the Lunar Chronicles. I chose two because I wasn't sure if Splintered by A.J. Howard was a or is a um, Alice in Wonderland retelling. I'm pretty sure it is, but just in case it isn't, I have Everneath by Brody Ashton, which I know is a Persephone and Hades retelling. I'm moving on to question four. Do you have a book that is 10 letters long? And this one, 100%, I went through my bookshelf and I was counting the stinking letters. I was not going to do this on film. And that book is The Eye of Minds by James Dashner. Now, if you don't want to support James Dashner because of all of the things that happened a few years ago, completely understandable. Um, I do still recommend this series if you guys want something that is more virtual reality. So um, if that's something you guys are into, I do recommend this series and just see if you can get it from your library. If they're like, if your library doesn't have it, they can get it from another library like mine does. But it really is a good series and it, especially the first book has a, a major plot twist at the end that I, ju I just didn't see coming and that it, it ha I've had I can't even speak right now. I had like one of those moments where I just like had to sit the book down and stare into space because I was like, what the hell just happened? But and that that normally never happens when I read a book. So that says a lot about the plot twist. Question number five, and it's kind of a long one. Do you have a book with a title that starts with the same letter that it ends with? I'm pretty sure I don't, but we'll try. 
Now, obviously, I'm not counting the words the and any other like a. A, that would be pointless to count that. This is going to be hard. I probably should have done this off camera. Oh, I actually do have one. Miss Mayhem. They both start and end with an M. Question six is, do you have a mass paperback book? And yes, I have quite a few mass paperback books. Most of them are in the hallway because they're trashy romance books. So I do have one classic that's in here in the room with me, and let's see. It's The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I know a lot of people didn't like The Hobbit, but I didn't read the rest of the Lord of the Rings series. I only read this book, and I absolutely loved it. And it's been years and years and years since I've read the book. So, I mean, my opinions probably more than likely have changed since then, but when I read this, I did really enjoy it. You know, and that's actually saying something because I could not stay awake during Star Wars or Star Trek or even the Hobbit movie. The movies just, they weren't for me. <laughs> Question seven is, do you have a book with an author using a pen name? And technically, I have a book with two authors using a pen name. Autobiography by Christina Lauren with an author named Christina and author named Lauren. This is the only book of theirs that I've actually read, but as soon as I read it, I did end up picking up uh, Hating You, Dating You by them. And I am going to hopefully read that, not, if I read it this year, it'll probably be like around winter time, but I really do want to get to that book. That way I can see if I enjoyed as much as I did this one, that way I can get more of their books because they have so many books out. This sounds so good. But I, I've decreased my amount of book buying exponentially. You guys haven't had a haul from me in like so long. And that's mainly because I'm buying like maybe one or two books here every few months. And the majority of them are manga. Which I may do a manga haul or a bookshelf tour of my manga or something like that. Because that's the majority of what I've been buying here recently. Point is that I finally buckled down and decided that I need to read the books I have and not buy like a hundred books every few months. You know, the only exception to that is like books that I know I'm gonna read like right away, like any of Rick Riordan's books. I actually haven't even bought the last two Cassandra Clare books that have come out, so if that tells you anything, I knew I wasn't going to get to them right away, so I didn't buy them. Moving on to question eight. Do you have a book that has the character's name in the title? Once again, I'm gonna steer clear from obvious answers like Harry Potter which may make this challenge impossible. I don't know. Okay, I did find two, actually. I have Simon vs. Homo Sapiens Agenda, and I have Lee on the Offbeat. I really only have Lee on the Offbeat because it's signed. And I did really enjoy this book. Question number nine, do you have a book with two maps in it? This one I actually had to get from someone else's channel because I'm like, I went through so many books, so many fantasy, so many sci-fi books. I mean, I could have gone with, I guess, Illuminate. Technically, it has a map of the ship and everything, but I wouldn't be able to, like, track down what page it is at, like, any given moment. So, I have Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I believe both have two maps in it. I just picked up both books off my shelf because I was like, I know one of them has two maps in it. And this one does. Yay. That one is extremely difficult. I don't, I think these are literally the only two books I have that have two maps. Unless I could cheat and say map on this page, map on that page makes up one big map, but I didn't want to do that because I had plenty of books like that. Question number 10 is do you have a book that was turned into a TV show? Technically I had 13 reasons why I don't, I think I got rid of it just because I mean I read it, it was alright, didn't really care for it that much so I just, you know, unhold it. Um, I do have City of Bones. It was turned into everything, I think. But yeah, I have a City of Bones here. I can't really look at my bookshelves and, like, tell you if I have any other books that have been turned into TV shows, because I don't watch TV. The reason I stopped watching the Shadowhunter series is not because it was a bad show. I mean, granted, it, it like, butchered the source material. But and it has so many plot holes in it too. It's like it's, no, and so many spoilers too if you know the series. But all of that aside, the main reason I stopped watching it is because I kept forgetting to turn my TV on at that time to watch it. 
I, I, I got backed up on Teen Wolf. I haven't seen the last season of Teen Wolf because of the same issue here. I just, I forgot about it. A couple weeks later, I got behind, and it's like, I, I, I was like, I have to watch these episodes before I can watch those episodes, and it's like, I just eventually just stopped watching it because there's just too much to keep up with. Question number 11 is a book written by someone famous. Now they didn't specify whether this person became famous through writing or if this was a famous person that wrote a book and that's why the book got popular or something like that. I don't know. Point is, it's like, I was thinking, I was like, do I choose someone like obvious like JK Rowling because she became famous through her books? Or do I choose someone like Zoe Sugg who wrote Girl Online and I, I do believe she was famous before she wrote that book. I believe. Not sure. I've never watched any of Zoe Sugg's videos. I'm sorry. But I think for me personally, I want to go with a book that made the author famous. And I'm not going to choose the Harry Potter series because, you know, that series is what made J.K. Rowling famous. So I guess I'll just choose The Cursed Child, which is the only other book I have written by J.K. Rowling besides you know, Tales of Beale and the Bard. Actually, let's go Tales of Beale and the Bard. Tales of Beale and the Bard was so much better than The Cursed Child. We're not gonna speak of The Cursed Child. It's horrible. Question number 12 is, do you have a book with a clock on the cover? And I know I do, because I just got done reading this series. Where did I put this series? It was, it was oh, I found it. <laughs> Literally staring me right in the face. But here we go. Ruby Red by Christian Gear. This is a clock right here. And there's actually, oh, clock tower in the back. Haha, -ha, Big Ben. Question 13 is, do you have a poetry book? Honestly, I don't own a poetry book. I've written poetry. I've had poetry published before. But I have, like, you know, in a bind up of other people's poetry. I've never, like, had a book on poetry published. Uh, but I don't if I have any books on poetry, I don't know where they are. So that's one book I don't have. Question 14 is, do you have a book with an award stamped on it? I'm sure I have like a buttload of books that have stamped or awards on it. Uh, this one, I just, I kept out from earlier because debut award, nice. And I never actually like anything with an award on it. I don't face forward on the bookshelf. So like just, just looking at my shelves, I don't see any other ones with an award on it. So I'm just gonna go with Simon Bristol Homo Sapiens Agenda again, because I really can't think. Speak probably has one, and The Giver, oh, I think The Giver does have one. I was right, The Giver does have an award on the cover. So that's two books with awards. Question 15 is a book with an author that has the same initials as you. My initials are BW, and I do not believe that I have a book that the I don't think I own any books. Well, I say that now, but I don't think I own many books where the author's name actually starts with a B. So I don't think this is going to be possible. No, I do. Bill something, but it's our, his last name starts with a K. So, you know, and this was marked as one of those questions where I actually looked beforehand. So I, I, I don't think that I actually have any book with the author initials BW because I'm, I mean I'm just doing a quick search in my bookshelves and I see none <laughs> so this is going to be another one of those that I do not have question 16 is do you have a book of short stories and yes I surprisingly have a great number of books with short stories in them steering clear of Cassandra Clare's books because obviously I have those I have Stars Above by Marissa Meyer. Then I also have The Cruel Crown and Unite Me. And I also have pretty much all of Rick Riordan's short stories. Question number 17 is, do I have a book between 500 and 510 pages long? This is another one of those books that I probably should have looked for beforehand. But I wanted to make this like a little bit difficult. Not like have, you know, everything just handed to me. I say that, but I still would have been doing the work anyways. What the hell? Okay, I finally found one, and it's The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. It actually ends on 501, which I am counting. There were several other books that I had. There was, like, 
516, 520, and it's like, oh my god, just be in the 5 to 510 range, and here we go. Just barely making it in. Question 18 is a book that was turned into a movie. Now for this one, I'm going to go with The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. Yes, this was a horrible adaptation if you read the book, but I chose this one simply because I watched this movie before I even heard of the books, and then I learned that the movie was an adaptation of this series and I immediately went out, bought the entire series, and binge read it in like a month. And this was before I became a reader. But yeah, if it wasn't for that movie adaptation, I never would have learned, well, I'm not saying I never would have learned about these books, but I would have learned about them a lot further down the road. And I really needed them in the time I read them. Question number 19 is, do you have a graphic novel? And I'm not usually one for graphic novels. I just steer towards the manga. But I do actually have one uh, graphic novel series. And that is the Clockwork series by Cassandra Clare. I mean, I really do love the art style of these. I mean, it's actually very nice. It really, it's not an art style that I'm used to, but I actually really love it. And you know, actually, you can say this is a manga, but I'm going to call it a graphic novel because I'm pretty sure it's actually on Goodreads as a graphic novel, so I'm counting it. But moving on to the final question, you have a book written by two or more authors, and yes, I have a lot of books written by two or more authors. Well, maybe not more than two authors, but I have the Illuminate Trilogy that's written by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is Obsidio because it's the closest one within my reach, and Christina Lauren that was in this, in this video previously. Then there's Zenith by Sasha Allsberg and Lindsay Cummings. I will pull it out so you guys can see it. I have this book. I don't have the second book to the series. I requested it from my library and that's how I'm going to read it. Off the top of my head and just by looking at these bookshelves I don't see any others that are written by two or more authors. I'm sure there are and I'm sure there's a lot that I don't know about. Like Christina Lauren, that was a new one for me. I didn't know that was actually two authors until I read Autobiography and I was, you know, checking out the author information in the back and it was talking about it. And I was like, oh, that is shocking, but also really, really cool. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna go with these and Christina Lauren's books. So my score is 18 out of 20. I would hold up all the books that I mentioned in this video, but like half of them were on my bed and the other half I was actually putting on the shelf as I pulled them off. So <laughs> I'm not gonna pull them back off, all back off the shelf because I, I can't even remember all the books I mentioned now. That is it for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!